Okay, Rooney, thanks so much for that. By the way, don't miss an exclusive interview with Coinbase's chief financial uh, officer. That's tomorrow morning on Squawk Box. Charlie, I'm going to come to you on, on this one. I mean, I know you don't like Bitcoin itself, but, uh, but, but you, you own Goldman Sachs, a big trading company. Do you ever look at these uh, crypto trading companies? Sure, look at them. Nothing to see. Uh, this, is, this just doesn't pass the Rip Van Winkle test. If you went to sleep for five years, could you be confident when you woke up that this company is going to be okay? And the answer is it could be gone in five years. I mean, I really do think this is an area where governments around the world do not want a competitive currency, and they can outlaw this with a stroke of the pen, basically in the way that Roosevelt did to gold in the 30s. So I think there's a lot of risk that this goes down a lot. Uh, I don't think this business is by any means guaranteed to be here in five years. Yeah, I mean, to that point, Mike, um, I mean, the company itself is using the word volatility. It's using the words inherently unpredictable. It yeah. really speaks to essentially how early we are within the cryptocurrency asset class. I don't know whether you call it adoption sure. or trading, where it fits into the broader market. Right. It, it has become huge in so, so fast. Um, and, you know, this business actually become very big in, in a hurry without really knowing the rules of the game that are going to be in place for a while. Uh, presumably, the muted response to the numbers is because of the commentary on uh, the current quarter mm -hmm. uh, volumes being down. Because, you know, anything taken on its own terms, the results seem very good. I mean, you did not have a peak in overall volume or customer relationships in the first quarter, as many people thought, which is when uh, Bitcoin price uh, did peak. But I'd be interested to know, maybe we'll get some more color on, on how the, the last quarter played out. In other words, was it very front-loaded toward, you know, the beginning of the quarter, and that's why uh, it petered out. But absolutely, even if you don't get it outlawed and even if the, the whole industry doesn't go away, which I think is a, somewhat of a long shot at this point, a lot of the regulation seems to be pushing institutions toward listed futures on mm -hmm. Bitcoin, things that are outside the, the direct realm of where uh, Coinbase itself probably has the greatest uh, sway. Charlie, of course, Goldman Sachs, which you do own, uh, has started uh, trading Bitcoin futures. Uh, but pivoting away from, from that financials position that you have, I uh, wanted to touch on another because you're getting close to taking some profits on KKL. Thank you for, for bringing that one up, Wilf. I mean, this is a name I think I've probably talked about KKR more than any other name on your show. And, and people, as I mentioned, do watch your show and they, and they ask me about it on the street. This, this is a wonderful company that we started buying at around 14 or 15. At the time, that was at book value. So you were able to get the fees and the carried interest basically for free. Today, the stock is over 60. It's about 65. And that's right on top of our valuation. So we continue to hold it. But it was extremely cheap, great company. Now it's just a great company, no longer extremely cheap. Yeah, she, I want to I get your thoughts, especially given the fact that we are in a week where we're seeing the so-called meme stocks report earnings and, and names in general that have been garnering a lot of investor, retail investor interest, how it speaks to kind of the composition of the market right now and just kind of the wild year we've seen as we do continue to tick, albeit at very small increments, we do continue to tick higher to these, to these record levels. Yes, right now I think um, a lot of investors are just uh, – uh, the names are, are good, but uh, there's a lot of concern out there still with inflation protections. So um, we, we, we are helping our investors and uh, trying to uh, get investors to diversify, continue to diversify out of mega cap stocks, uh, look into just stocks with more pricing power. Uh, infrastructure has been, you know, just all over the news uh, with this package coming out. And then commodities and oil, it's another big area. Uh, along with, of course, utilities, industrials has been, you know, reaching highs recently. And, um, you know, with very low yield, uh, looking at investment grade short term duration bonds, uh, which are lower sensitivity to rising long term yields. Charlie, just wanted to go to a reopening stock that I know you always mention hasn't done so well of late. Uh, MSG, what's your latest thoughts? Yeah, um, you're absolutely right. They bought um, MSGN, the television sports network, and the market hated the trade. People who owned the stock wanted to invest in arenas in Madison Square Garden, in the Sphere in Las Vegas, uh, and it's going to do very well when we do reopen and when the Sphere is finished. Uh, the, they probably shouldn't have done the Madison Square Garden network deal, but it, the reaction has been way overdone. The stock went from 120 to under 70. 
Uh, Madison Square Garden is still a spectacular location, a spectacular venue that's sold out for the next year. The stock is way too cheap. Charlie and she, thank you both for joining us. Great to see you both.